Hey guys, it's Frank, and if you're looking at this right now, that means you've already purchased our 4th of July wine tasting kit, all right? So I'm here to actually walk you through all of these wines. We've got all kinds of different wines here. We've got some dry wines, some sweet wines, some mid-sweet wines. So I hope you got a lot of friends together, and we're having a party tonight, because that's what we're going to do right now, right here. I've also got a Berry Bliss here that we're going to do. We're going to do some crackers, all kinds of stuff here. So let's get started. Now we're going to start out with our driest white. We're gonna go and transition to some of our sweeter whites. Then we're gonna start out with our driest red, go to some of our sweetest reds. So for those of you who don't exactly like sweet wines, we're gonna start with our dry. So what I've got here, my first that we've got is our summertime strut. Now, if you've never had a dry muscadine wine, this is an awesome one to really try because you still get a little bit of that muscadine taste in there that fruity taste that you don't get in your normal chardonnays or anything like that but if you're looking for something like that this is the closest we have to something like a chardonnay or a pinot grigio now we're going to give this a little bit of a pour there we go we'll do that looks about good so you guys get yours poured too we're going to try this together now that smell, if you never smell muscadines, that's what you're gonna smell in a lot of these wines, that just fresh muscadine smell. I grew up in North Carolina, be walking through the woods, we'd find these hanging in the trees on the vines, pull them off. I'm telling you, I, I remember this smell from when I was a kid. So let's give this a taste. This is our summertime strut, our driest white wine we have. It's about a 0.3% sugar content. Hmm. Get that on your tongue a little bit, get that taste. And as that goes down, it's really super smooth. I like that one. Oh, that's a great one. Hey, if you're not a big fan of dry wines, it's a really good one to cook with. Throw this in with some shrimp, add a little bit of garlic. You got a nice shrimp scampi, add some butter in there. It's an awesome wine to cook with also if you're not into the dry wines. So we're gonna go from our driest. We're gonna flip over a little bit. So what I want you to do right now, Take a cracker, pop that in your mouth because you want to get that dry taste because we're going to go to our mid-sweet. We want to get that off of our palate and go to our Midnight Magnolia. Now, this is one of my easily top five to six favorite wines because I like a mid-sweet. We're going to take this. This is made with a Magnolia Muscadine grape. And this is one of our estate wines. Now, what an estate wine is, that means we grow the grapes for this, okay? So we've got to grow the grapes for this within about four miles of our facility where we do our production. You're gonna do that, and it's also a cold fermentation. So that means instead of about a 64 to 70 degree fermentation, we do this at 52 degrees. And that's gonna give this an extra smooth finish to that wine. And again, give it a smell. This one, you get even more of that muscadine smell. And you, you could almost smell the sweetness in this. You're looking at about a 6.5% sugar content on this to about a seven. It's gonna be a nice mid-sweet, uh, similar to a Riesling. If you guys like a uh, sweet Riesling, that's kind of what this reminds me of a little bit. So let's give this a taste, cheers. Again, did that get on your tongue? Oh, that one, I'm telling you, a nice summer hot night Take a cold chill bottle of this out on the porch. You're gonna love it. You really get that muscadine taste in this one, even more than you did in our summertime strut. And this is actually Jonathan's favorite wine. Now, Jonathan is one of our owners, Jonathan Fussell. It's one of his favorite wines. And he said it, it has been the gift that keeps giving because when he first introduced his wife to this wine, she ended up having their first kid. So that's this. His wine that keeps giving. But that's our mid-sweet. So now we're going to really go from that mid-sweet all the way up to a very sweet wine called Bryce's Creek. Now you're looking at about a 10 to 11% sugar content in this. So this is going to be very sweet. In fact, if you've ever had muscadines right off the vine, this one tastes almost exactly like one of those. Now this is actually a blend of two different grapes though. This is going to be a little bit of our Scuppernong grape and a little bit of that Niagara grape. Now your Niagara grape, what that is, that is a non-muscadine grape. 
You're going to find those in upstate New York. And I'm telling you, some of my favorite wines that we make are blends of our muscadine grapes and our non-muscadine grapes that we get. Now, this Bryce's Creek is actually named after Bryce's Creek, which is in this area down here, uh, close to the winery. And it's also named after Mama Carr, which is Jonathan and Dave's grandmother. That was her maiden name, and they named that after her, too. So, again, give it a smell. And I'm telling you, the sweeter these get, you can, seriously, when you smell these, you just get that almost sweet smell that you get in these. It's an amazing smell. So let's try this Bryce's Creek. And again, you're looking at about a 10 to 11% sugar content. So get ready for some sweet. Mm. That is such a great taste. You get that muscadine taste, but mixed with those Niagara grapes. Again, some of my favorite wines are those blends that we do with some non-muscadine grapes. And Bryce's Creek is right there at the top for me. So we're gonna switch over now. So if you got a little glass of water or a cup of water here, let's take a sip of that. And we are also gonna take another cracker because we want to get from that sweet, we're gonna go to our driest red. So let's get a cracker. Now, this wine is called Burgundy. Now it's not a true Burgundy wine. This is actually a wine made with a noble muscadine grape. Now the way that we get some of our dry wines as dry as they are, we pick these very early in the season. Our harvest time, you're looking at somewhere between about the middle of August to about the middle of September. We pick these very early on in the season. Now if you like a Merlot or say a Cabernet, this is the go-to wine that I use um, similar to that, but it's not going to be nearly quite as dry. It's going to have more of a fruity taste. You're going to really get that noble muscadine flavor in there, but it's going to be a lot less sweet than some of our other wines. And that smell again, you just get that, oh, that awesome muscadine smell. It just reminds me of being a kid. I love these wines. So let's give this a taste. I can definitely taste that noble muscadine in there. If, if you ever had them off the vine and you've picked them early in the season, you're walking through the woods and you see something that aren't quite ripe, that kind of reminds me of that. You just don't get as much of that sugary taste in there. Now this one, again, if you're not a fan of dry wines, I use this one a lot for cooking. I'll take a whole roast, marinate it in this wine, a bottle of this wine overnight, the burgundy wine, Throw some garlic in there, some onions. Next day, throw it in a crock pot. You got an awesome meal when you get home from work. It only takes about eight hours. You get home, the house smells awesome. And make some roasted potatoes. I like to throw a little bit of dill on those and use that gravy to pour right over those potatoes and that roast beef. It is an awesome, awesome dinner to do. Now, our next wine. Again, grab a cracker because we're going from our driest red, and we're gonna to go to another mid-sweet. This is called Pelican Red. Now, this Pelican Red, this is also a blend. This is gonna be a blend of some of our mid-harvest muscadines, and you're gonna have a little bit of the pink Catawba grape in there. Now, your pink Catawba grape, it's another non-muscadine grape that they also grow mainly in the upstate area of New York. If you ever go to Finger Lakes, you'll find a lot of your pink Catawba grapes and a lot of your Niagara grapes. and they just blend so well with our muscadines. But this is called Pelican Red. You're looking at somewhere around a 7 to 8% sugar content in this. And the reason it's called Pelican Red is when we opened up in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina about six years ago, we did a partnership with the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. Now, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans, they're a farm team. They're a farm team for the Boston Red Sox. And they wanted a wine that they could sell at their games so we came up with Pelican Red because we wanted something that wasn't too sweet, but not too dry. So you get those people from up north that are coming down south to Myrtle Beach and the people that are there living, kind of something that they could share together. So that's what we came up with. And this is our Pelican Red. Let's give this one a taste. And you'll notice the color. It's not overly red. It's kind of a, a real light, light color of red. So this is another, it's a really good summer wine, really good cold summer wine. great. I 
sit at the ballpark, watch some baseball, take a glass of that, and I'm telling you, you'll have an awesome time. Get a couple hot dogs with it. Now, the next one we've got is actually our best seller. This one is called Hatteras Red. Now, Hatteras Red, it's a blend of a couple different of our late harvest muscadine grapes. Now, you're looking at about a 10.5 to 11% sugar content in this. So we're getting up to those high levels of sugar here. So if you wanna grab another cracker, go ahead. I'm gonna skip the crackers. I'm watching my weight, so I don't want all those carbs. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. But this is our Hatter's Red. We're gonna pour a little bit of that in there. Now I've mentioned about these tasting like muscadines. It reminded me of when I was a kid. This one is my number one go-to for that. This one to me, if you've ever had a muscadine right off the vine, pop it in your mouth. I like the skins. A lot of people don't like the skins. So I pop it in my mouth, bite into it. You get those juices, those sweet juices, but you get that skin that's kind of got a little bit of a, I call it the muscadine bite, kind of bites you back. So that's what you get with this. When you first put this in your mouth, you're gonna get that sweet sensation of the juice, but then you're gonna get that bite towards the end of this in the finish. So let's give this a taste. First, get that on your tongue again. That sweet taste gets about right here in your throat, kind of bites you back, just like those skins do. That one, my number one go-to if I'm wanting something that really reminds me of eating these grapes when I was a kid. I still eat them today, but it still takes me back to those, to those days in the woods when I was a kid. Now, if you're looking for a wine for health reasons, our next wine is Scuppernong Blush. And this is actually our highest in resveratrols, which is an antioxidant. Now, this is another sweet wine. You're looking 10 to 11% sugar content. This is our late harvest Scuppernongs and some of our late harvest Muscadines all blended together. Now, your Muscadines and your Scuppernong, you know, well, your Scuppernongs, they're a version or a variety of your muscadine. So your muscadine grapes, they're about 10 times more high in those resveratrols, those antioxidants than any other grape that you have out there. So if you like red wines, they're healthy for you, but our muscadine wines are about 10 times that. And this is our highest in those resveratrols. So if you're looking for something just to kind of boost your immune system, it helps out with uh, some High blood pressure, I've talked to people who have come in here that swear that as they drink these wines, it's helped with their blood pressure. I've got about at least four or five people that I know here that swear by that. So if you're looking for something for those antioxidants, this is our best wine to do that, Scuppernong Blush. Tastes good too, so let's give this a taste. Now that Scuppernong, if you've never had the Scuppernong variety of Muscadine, to me, it's got a little bit more of a tart taste to it than some of your other Muscadine varieties. So that's why I like that one, because it gives you a little bit of a tart taste, but then with those other varieties of Muscadine mixed in there, it smooths it out on the finish. So that one starts out a little bit tart, but then smooths out on your finish. So that's our Scuppernong blush. Now we're coming to my personal favorite wine that we have. And this is called Going Coastal. This is my favorite wine because it's a blend of about four different grapes. You got a little bit of Scuppernong grape in there. You got a little bit of a grape called the James grape. Those are both Muscadines. And then you've got a little bit of that Pink Catawba and Niagara. And those all blended together, to me, this is the smoothest wine we have here that we make here at Duplin Winery. Now it's called Going Coastal. And it's called Going Coastal because when we opened up in North Myrtle Beach, that was the wine that we made kind of just for our North Myrtle Beach location. We hand bottle that one. Well, we did hand bottle it when we first started out. We do both now. We hand bottle it and we do it on the production line here in Rose Hill. But originally it was all hand bottled. So chances are if you get a bottle of this, you've got a pretty good chance of that being hand bottled there in North Myrtle Beach. But it's a really smooth wine. Those blend of that muscadine and that non-muscadine, again, some, those are some of my favorite wines. And this is by far my number one go-to wine that we make here in Duplin County at Duplin Winery. Mm. That one can get you in trouble, guys, I'm telling you. That's one that 
as you're drinking it, it goes down so smoothly. It is so sweet. You start drinking on a Saturday night. Next thing you know, it's Tuesday morning. But that I love that wine. I really, really do love that wine. Uh, let's see. The next wine we've got, we're going to go to our Sangria Red. Now, I know you can make Sangria at home. You mix the wine. You mix some fruit in there. We've made it where you don't have to take all those steps. We've actually added the fruit in there for you. So what we've got here, we've got some of our late harvest muscadines again, but we've added some citrus flavors in there. We got a little bit of peach, mango, lemon, lime, strawberry. Now we've got a white also. The white to me has more of a peach mango taste. This sangria red though, that has more of a berry taste to me. I really get the strawberry taste in this, especially on the finish. Just give that a pour. And if I was you, I'd go ahead and take a cracker right now because that way you'll get some of those citrusy, fruity tastes in there. Definitely. So let's give this a taste. Again, the smell. I get some berry smell in there, definitely. That muscadine smell is the first thing, but you do get some berry hints in there at the end. So let's give this a taste. Here you go. Cheers, guys. Mm, definitely get some strawberry taste in there. A little bit of that citrus taste towards the finish, but that is a great wine too. That's another one of my top five, uh, especially during the summer. If you want to go outside, have a party, add some fruit to that. Now we've already got the fruit flavoring in there, but I really like adding a little bit of bananas and strawberries in there. Throw some apples in there too, but my, my go-to with that is throwing some bananas and strawberries in there. That is a really, really good wine. So, it's going to bring us to our last wine. This is our Sweet Poppy. Now, our Sweet Poppy is one of our wines with some effervescent, some bubbly wine, in other words. So this is called Sweet Poppy. This is another sweet wine. We're looking at about 11% sugar content again. This is a late harvest muscadine. And we've added a little bit of peach flavor in there. Now, on this one, we actually make the wine here. We send it up to Naples, New York. They add that effervescence and send it back to us. So you're going to get a little bit of bubbles in here. You're going to get a really, really fresh taste on this wine. Uh, this is also a good wine to do with mimosas. With the sweet poppy, I've done it with uh, orange juice and pineapple juice. My personal favorite with that is the pineapple juice. I really do like the pineapple juice. And it's also good, a little bit, of, if you like, uh, like, a root, uh, like a root beer float, but you want to do a wine float, add some of that to some vanilla ice cream. That is really good because you get that effervescence with that ice cream. So let's give this a taste, guys. Cheers. Yeah, you get that pop in your mouth from those bubbles. I love that. That's just awesome. So that's a sweet poppy. So let me go over some of the stuff you're going to get in this kit. Then we'll do the Berry Bliss very last. You're going to get all of these 10 wines. You're going to get one of these Berry Bliss, which we'll go over that in a minute. You are going to get one of these bags of the crackers that I've been eating today. We make these here. They're an onion garlic flavored cracker. These things are amazing. Some days when I forget to bring lunch, I'll make lunch out of these crackers and some of the dip we make here, which brings me to our pineapple habanero salsa. Now our pineapple habanero, pineapple habanero salsa, that's a hard one to say. We actually make a dip here with this. And when you get this at home, you can do this at home too. What you're going to do is you're going to take half a jar of this muscadine pineapple habanero salsa, and you're going to add that to about eight ounces of cream cheese. Now, what I would do is I get that cream cheese to room temperature, throw that in a mixer, let that mix up a little bit so it gets nice and fluffy. And then you're going to add your salsa to that, mix that up, and it's going to taste exactly like we make it here, guys. I'm telling you, that's amazing with these crackers. Just take a cracker, dip it in there. It's a good little appetizer before you eat one night. Now, the last thing that you're gonna get, well, you're also gonna get your recipe card for what I just told you there, but uh, I just told you the recipe, but in case you don't remember it, there's the card. Last thing you're gonna get is you're gonna get this cool, cool wine glass. You know the nice thing about it? Whoa, it does not break, okay? That is an awesome wine glass there. It's a, what do they call it? Not rubber, but it almost feels rubbery but it'll bounce. So if you drop it, the only thing you're going to spill, which is not a great thing, is the wine. 
you're not going to break your glass. So you're going to get that too. It's on the floor over there, but uh, it's a really, really cool thing to have at the house so you don't break your glasses. So now our last thing that we're going to try is our Berry Bliss. Now this is one of our sweetsers. Our Berry Bliss sweetser, the way you make these at home, is there's going to be two aluminum foil packs in here. One of those packs is going to have a, looks like Kool-Aid, you know, the powder form of Kool-Aid. Both of them are going to have that. You're going to take one of them. You're going to take half a bottle of whatever wine this calls for. In this case, this is going to call for our Burgundy, which is also in your wine tasting kit here. You're going to mix that up. Make sure it is all diluted into the wine. Pour that over a blender full of ice. Blend that up. And this is what you're going to get, guys. This is our Berry Bliss Sweetser. What these are, they're wine slushies. So they're adult slushies. They are awesome. Um, they're great at the lake. If you go down the lake, take a pitcher full of these at the beach. If you're out mowing the yard and you want something refreshing afterwards, this is a great refreshing drink to have after that. Or if you're just sitting around the house one night and you and whoever you're with, they want to have a nice little after dinner kind of dessert. This is a really good thing for that. So let's give this a taste, guys. Berry Bliss, it is a mix of some different berries. I get kind of a strawberry raspberry taste in that. It's awesome. It's easy to make at home. So we've got this in the kit. You got the burgundy. It's easy to make. And I'm telling you, oh, and if you got kids that are underage, you can actually take the other one, make that with either some water, or we do have some non-alcohol wines here also that you could order. Make that for the kids. I've got a niece. She loves these. So we'll make some for us. And we'll make one for her so she kind of feels like she's hanging out with us and she's having her drinks. We're having our drinks. She loves those. So that's a really, really cool thing to do during the summer, guys. That's it. That's the wine tasting. I hope you guys had a good time. Thanks for actually buying the kit. And I hope that you have an awesome summer and a happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July from Duplin Winery, guys. Cheers.